So Sylvia and I are sitting here together talking about writing with middle schoolers, sixth, seventh graders, that type of thing. And you moved with a whole group of kids. You were right. teaching sixth grade one year yes. and then went up the next year to teach seventh. sixth. Okay, seventh, seventh only. Grade. At first I thought sixth and seventh. Well, seven. it was a little bit of sixth and seven, but the sixth graders I'd never had before. Okay, so, so it was a combination class of some kids you had already had mm -hmm. all of them, and then some new kids. So you really had to rethink right, how you were doing your writing Normally I would start off with your generic narrative about themselves, and then we did on the second trimester uh, more of a research report of a uh, biography of their choice. And then, and then an interspersing response to literature and uh, persuasive essays and then at the end they got to do a poetry book about themselves uh, and various poetry styles you know whether it was um, uh, partner poems uh, you know using specific styles of poetry limerick poem and they all had to create their own I had them create a book of them and then there was a, an analysis of a poem which was I believe this one was mother to son mm -hmm. and then they had to write a response to uh, that mother to son poem and um, include it in theirs and they also got to look for a sort of a scavenger hunt they got to uh, look for about 15 poems that they enjoyed and then after the poem they read me I mean they wrote down why they particularly mm -hmm like this poem and why it represented uh, the uh, whatever it was a poem using onomatopoeia or there's other ones uh, a lyric poem and so on oh, so they were able to look mm -hmm. for different yes. literary devices exactly to and that way they would incorporate them hopefully in their poetry too mm -hmm. but you know it just it worked with some more than others some that were really in tune with uh, you know limericks or some were more in tune with um, prepositions or they're more comfortable so you just took from what you were comfortable with so you already had a way of that you had built up of delivering writing instruction right. in different genres mm -hmm. and having kids experiment with different forms but this year you were challenged to right. make it a bit different you, you, you <laughs> <laughs> primarily because years. most of these students I I had before so they had already assumed uh, that I was going to repeat everything mm. that I did the previous year. Mm -hmm. So this time, uh, because I had gone to thinking map training, um, we used uh, thinking maps to incorporate some ideas for their own writing. So um, instead of me finding out more about, for example, Katie, um, the uh, issue was now more uh, getting them to come up with some um, plots or storylines for their mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. uh, ideas in writing. And then usually I had them write about themselves in the sixth grade and this year I had them uh, profile or ask questions of someone else that was important to them. It could have been a family friend, it could have been um, family, it could have been someone that they were really interested in but they knew personally. So it was kind of a way to get them to still exercise the narrative muscles, right? But it was so another subject, view, exactly from their point of view, what they think of this person, and and even though they get information from them, what why are they important in their um, in their lives? So mm -hmm. we continued on with our uh, uh, narratives and um, persuasive essays and response to literatures, but. This year was a little bit more of a challenge because they already knew sort of the tricks in the trade and we've mm -hmm. done this this year. So this year, uh, primarily also because we have the new argumentative opinion and it is a seventh grade uh, standard and yes. it, may be on the, uh, it may have been on the, um, the writing, uh, the test, yes. the state well, test. The Mm -hmm. We didn't know what was going to come up, so sure. I was comfortable, or they seemed to be comfortable with the narrative, but now it persuasive they were comfortable with their own opinions, mm -hmm. but argumentative is now you have to look at evidence uh, to come up. So uh, what I did was I took a uh, uh, information off of a uh, the. Uh, iCivics website, which is a uh, website developed by um, former 
Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Oh, wow. And she uh, has a lot of information for kids to develop, um, you know, uh, topics about politics and politicians and, and how the court system works. Mm. So what we did was I took one of her topics, which was um, evidence for banning T-shirts. And I chose something mm. that would that would resonate with them if yes. they were... Uh, in this situation, what would they do? Uh, so the evidence was that they were supposed to look at this t-shirt that was banned by the school, it was a music t-shirt, and why it was banned. And we looked at the case study of this as well as the actual Supreme Court ruling mm -hmm. on um, school rules and why is it that we have uniforms or, uh, it depends on the school, but most of them I'm sorry. Uh, most of them looked about what the uh, rule was. So this was a authentic mm -hmm. ruling, something that had really yes. been dealt with by the court. Yes, and so that way uh, they developed themselves what they thought would uh, be why ban not ban t-shirts and why ban t-shirts. And the, the primary cause is, I mean, in the evidence from the court case, was disruption. Mm. If it causes disruption in the classroom, then the school has the authority to remove whatever is disrupting the continual, uh, or whatever it is that the students want to bring, whether it's cell phones, t-shirts, or just even verbal acts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the students went ahead and did a double bubble and uh, looked at the uh, about banning t-shirts with the rule and then they go ahead and outline and um, outline their thoughts of what happened and did Benjamin in this story violate the rule and so on and then they go ahead and write their rough draft off of it and and then um, also use evidence from from the court case, and this is the evidence. This is from an actual mm. Tinker versus Des Moines, and this was very. Uh, it's a lot of. <laughs> it was a lot of talk through with the students. Yes. We, we, you know, and through each case, and why is this a First Amendment rule? Why don't we have? The students are very much in favor of. I have the right to say what I want, and I yes. said yes, you do to a certain extent, but you, we have to read the rules. So we'd always go back to the. Um, the ruling. It kind of gave them an opportunity to integrate the reading with the writing. Yes. What does this really say? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. And so uh, they developed their own, uh, there was the rough draft and then their, the counterpoint and then, you know, whatever they had to do, uh, I underlined this is her rough draft stuff that she had to prove it and that, the, you know, the student was missing a uh, concluded paragraph. But eventually, they uh, create their own uh, thoughts, and then I give them feedback, which I don't seem to see in her packet. But okay. But so this they is went basically a long process. Yes, a long process. So this. It, it took a while for the argumentative one, um, and I know now I have a little bit more of a focus. I I will be able to hopefully streamline some of this, and not just include banning, but other, so that they have a choice that they have much more of a, um, an authentic uh, one that they would like to prove, something that resonates with them. So uh, with the readings that I've done, well, hopefully I will incorporate that. But in the meantime, they still continue yes. <laughs> with, uh, with writing their own, uh, their own narratives. And so Writer's Workshop was a little bit more fluid this year that after the second trimester. Sure. And then, um, you know, they would still have articles for me, and I incorporated a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, thinking maps, so that they could feel a little bit more organized themselves mm. as far as mm -hmm. um, uh, working on articles or uh, summaries or whatever it is. Because I was not sure what they were going to ask about in the uh, state test. You were trying to prepare them for, for everything. <laughs> I yeah. almost feel like I was throwing everything at them <laughs> and see what they would do. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had them uh, working on myths, mm. uh, so they create their own myth. Uh, we worked on uh, reading various myths because they're also dealing with uh, Greek mythology. Yes. And so we read a bunch of myths, and then they would go ahead and sort of uh, uh, hopefully emulate some of the things that were there, but they got to create their own mm -hmm. 
their own uh, reasoning for it if they were to um, work through it. And so, I'm looking, uh, there's more of thinking maps. Sorry. Ah. And then at the end of the year, this, this is beginning in third trimester, we would start with another, uh, because I had gotten so much feedback from the, the uh, argumentative that I was said, I still need to work on this with them. Uh, okay. So um, third trimester, we did something similar, but most of the books that I read about, this is, is more spoon-fed to them, and I understand. Sure, um, that was the first yes. time they were doing uh -huh. that kind of writing. So the next time, as much as I gave them information, but a lot of the time uh, they would have to start looking up the information themselves. Okay. Because it wasn't, uh, I wasn't going to be able to do everything for them. Sure. So um, I'd give them some sources, some of them they took off of their own, they went onto their own websites, mm -hmm. and they would come up with a... Um, a plan of, of uh, for this one, it was about whether we should have zoos. Okay. Uh, so, sh so mm -hmm. should zoos exist? So they were practicing argument again, but they had more responsibility. Yes, they had a lot more case. responsibility to look up in the information. So uh, they would summarize the articles for me, so I knew what they were using, mm -hmm. and then eventually, uh, and eventually work on a rough draft and so on. And then uh, I still kept working with them on a, um, the other writing forms, a uh, descriptive essay, mm -hmm. uh, but this time we picked a setting oh. instead of a person, okay. and they were just supposed to write on a particular place that they found exciting, and we still do, you know, cause and effect mm -hmm. essays and, and so on. So, I'm sorry, this was the rough draft, this was the final copy. Mm -hmm. So, it was a little bit not as, as, as difficult I thought it was going to be, but at the same time, the more practice I have at it, the easier it is for next year. Oh, yes. So, there's a cause and effect relationship, and then they had a, um, this one, cause and effect. Pointing prompts. So oh, yeah. It seems like you're kind of saying, so you did a lot of the same kinds of writing. You just tweaked the assignments. Yes. yes. And this time they were using thinking maps to kind of yes. organize. Uh -huh. Exactly. Him. How to handle a bully. Yes. Mm. So they, I got more comfortable with the thinking maps because we just started implementing them this year, and that way, as. Um, as a teacher because a lot of my colleagues wanted to know how I incorporate them mm -hmm. into, uh, into the writing, I would take whatever it was that they were working on and I would work backwards and say, okay, what is a way to organize this? And maybe it's a thinking map, uh, there may be uh, you know, a flow map, a, a bubble map, a comparison, and sometimes they make mistakes and I would, you know, this is really not what it's useful for. I know a lot of students wanted to please me because they had me the previous year and they knew that my standards were, oh, she needs all this filled out if I'm going to get full credit. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was a lot more as a learning process uh, myself to incorporate a lot of what we did in the, uh, in the classroom. Also, uh, working with um, a notebook was sort of new to me. So uh, I'm hoping to incorporate this more this coming year okay. because um, I really didn't use it much before to teach lessons, but I believe this will this this approach does keep me on task mm -hmm. for um, for my <laughs> for my own organization for writing. Yes. And so, probably for some kids, yes. too, and I really just, need it all in one place. Yeah, but because I had known them from before, it was, and I shouldn't assume that they were going to just do this mm -hmm. automatically again. Mm -hmm. So I, I could see they were trying to, but I know, you know, this student didn't date, this didn't, you know, he mm -hmm. just kept going, and mm -hmm. he knew eventually that I wasn't really going to focus in on the dates, I was going to focus in on the content, so... He wasn't as concerned about, you know, the organizational part, which I think I should be. As you can see, it's sort of a, 
mishmash of a lot of stuff that I've been trying to work with and I need to be a little bit more organized this year. So it was a big year of learning for you yes. and the kids. Yes. You all were doing thinking maps for the first mm -hmm. time. You were doing genres you knew but with a different yes. grade yes. and the same kids which was mm -hmm. a pressure right there. Right. So, and it wasn't a pressure that I felt from anyone except from the kids, yes. which is good mm -hmm. because it shows me that I need to keep on my toes about this and mm -hmm. writing as much as I work with my students telling them it's the natural process, it should be, um, it should be a learning process and the whole thing, I forget sometimes for myself that I need to do a lot of that learning. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes me grow as a teacher, I would hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope it gets better. So. Definitely, you'll continue using the notebooks, continue using the thinking maps. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering with that argument piece, did you see more the reading, the conversation, the maps? Which do you think really helped the kids understand I, that the I most? I the, personally think the conversation. Mm. The conversation was huge mm -hmm. because we really got into the argument piece. And uh, uh, what helped was that this this, at least for the civics one, the iCivics one, was set up more as a uh, uh, advocate and a, or a lawyer and a defendant, you know. It's mm -hmm. much more set up that way. So the kids took roles as the prosecuting attorney or as the mm -hmm. defendant, the lonely student that only came to school because he liked the musical band, you know. Okay. Um, so that got them thinking and I think I'm going to incorporate a lot more of that in the, uh, as far as the argument, opinion mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. um, that much more for next time, much more okay. of the conversation, because otherwise I feel like I'm spoon feeding a lot of this to them, and it's as much as I want to help them, I understand in the end they're going to have to do this eventually mm -hmm. on their own, whether it's to take a stand on something they truly believe in and make an argument for it, not just uh, not just say, it's because I say so. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm reading a lot about the Common Core. It, back yourself up with evidence, yes. not just your own opinion, which is fine mm -hmm. if it's an opinion piece, but back yourself up with evidence from what you see and what you take from, from uh, the, uh, the sources that you can get. So it sounds like that time to talk, to develop the critical thinking mm -hmm. around whatever the topic is, is really necessary. Yes, in I, that do, kind of writing. I do believe so. I, and I don't say that you shouldn't, you know, use the thinking maps, uh, use time to draft out your ideas mm -hmm. and conversations between you and the student, conferencing. But for me, I saw, at least visually, I saw more lit up faces mm. when they were talking to each other going through the argument piece of why they believe that was evidence and why this isn't evidence and so on. Maybe just another layer we need to remember yeah. in doing uh, right I know. All right. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing with oh us. Goodness. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too 